around 2011, 2012, <clears throat> I started to become uh, aware of the manosphere, such as it existed back then, and um, and I, I uh, also became aware of the the uh, the the <laughs> of the pickup artists, um, and, um, you know, what they, what they had to say about this, that, and the other thing. And I, I thought to myself, I think in some way it planted a seed in me that la later became, um, the, uh, premise for my, uh, longest book, that I initially called the carnal terrorist during during the, the writing of the manuscript during all the time <clears throat> uh, that I was working on it I, I was thinking this is going to be ultimately this is ultimately going to be called the carnal terrorist but <clears throat> later it became um, heart killer because that was the, the, what uh, what was recommended uh, or it was it was like uh, when, when I when I got together with the publisher, the uh, who uh, and and it was E. R. Books that, that eventually published um, a published Heart Killer. The the editor said that that the title uh, the Carnal Terrorist did, just didn't really do it. Uh, it didn't. Uh, it wasn't good. It didn't. Um, you know, uh, it, it didn't pop. I guess to me it pops. To me it's a it's a cool title. But I've I've had a lot of other people tell me, yeah, Heart Killer is a better title than the Carnal Terrorist. So, so I defer <clears throat> I defer to them on this this matter. But uh, even though I'm right, <laughs> even though I'm right and they're wrong, I'll still graciously defer to to their incorrect opinion on this matter. So, um, so that was what the. Um, Heart killer slash the carnal terrorist. What initially uh, motivated it, or, or where, where it initially came out of, was I, I had sort of this. I, I I'd begun the the formation of this. Uh, call it a philosophy, I guess, uh, with respect to the manosphere and re with respect to uh, the issues raised in the manosphere. Um, and this was kind of bef this was well well before incels were a thing, and this was kind of before MGTOW was even a thing, as far as I was aware. Maybe MGTOW was around uh, back in 2011, 2012, but I wasn't aware of it. But um, you know, I, I was forming in my mind this whole idea that uh, you know this this whole like. The idea that you um, you can you can become more seductive if you ch uh, and and get women to sleep with you if you change something about yourself if you sell yourself a certain way and um, that that just always bothered me from the beginning uh, <clears throat> it struck me as um, as ignoble um, not just because you know you're looking for for cheap sex or, or whatever. Uh, and not just for the for the manipulation aspect of it, uh, but also just because you know to to um, I just think you should be genuine. You should be genuinely who you are, and um, <clears throat> you shouldn't uh, try to uh, repackage yourself. You know, I mean, talk about talk about being so-called blue pill. <clears throat> you know, I mean. The, the whole idea there was that, that that you wanted you wanted to become this other kind of person that would be more attractive. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best person that you can possibly be. Don't get me wrong. And if the best person that you can possibly be is more attractive than yourself at uh, you know your your mediocre self or your bad self, your poor self, I should say, not your bad self. Not like, go on with your bad self, but. You know what I'm saying? Um, then, then that's fine. That's a different matter entirely. But the whole idea of repackaging yourself to uh, to be to become a lady killer um, was just something that I 
I felt very strongly against. But then I, I thought to myself, uh, you know, what if I what if, what if I created this character who uh, m similar to Tony Meander in in the Columbine Pilgrim, uh, but you know, he, he want similar he similarly wanted to get back at uh, those who slighted him uh, because he was a geek or a nerd uh, in in high school, <clears throat> but. But but um, he for him it's taking it's the idea of taking the approach of being uh, becoming this uh, this Don Juan becoming this uh, serial seducer, um, and and so there was that story going on and concomitantly with that story there was there was another story that <laughs> where again I was writing from a. a, a a female point of view, so this is a, you know, a dueling narrator <clears throat> kind of, uh, kind of, um, uh, book, and that's, I think, why it became, it's why it's the only thing that I've written, the only book that I've written that's, that's really, uh, the length of a novel, uh, because, you know, I wrote a lot from <clears throat> both of these characters' perspectives. So the female character, uh, who uh, who we are first introduced to is uh, a, a a woman who's a like a strong empowered uh, type of woman but who hides this has seek who has the secret shame uh, which is that she she likes uh, to be dominated um, <clears throat> uh, and she's attracted to to bad not just bad boys but really bad boys like like murderers killers and and uh, you know, uh, those kinds of things. Um, and she is an FBI agent. Um, this was before I had really very strongly negative opinions about law enforcement, particularly federal law enforcement. So, uh, I don't think I would want to write from the point of view of a, of a sympathetic FBI agent today, but this was back in, back in 2012. Um, this was also when I was still feeling my oats, really, as far as creatively speaking. I, I could write at will. Nothing was stopping me. Um, there was no writer's block. I, I just felt like I had a, a clear path to my destination. Every day I was getting closer and closer uh, to finishing the latest project, and uh, it felt good. It, it really, it was, it was a... Like I said last time, it was a time of immense, immensely fruitful creativity. And uh, so this was in some ways, <clears throat> I guess, the most ambitious project that I'd, uh, you know, been working on of all the ones that I'd written so far, just because of, uh, you know, writing from two, uh, two, uh, two separate uh, um, characters, um, uh, you know, representing one character and then representing another character, <clears throat> both from a first-person point of view, and of course their their stories intersect. Um, uh, she eventually becomes comes to be under the spell of uh, of the the heart killer of the title, or the carnal terrorist of the original title, but <clears throat> but also at some point. Um, it, it became. It took on this magic, magic realist uh, element, if you will. Uh, I know I'm using the term magical realism. I know kind of loosely here, but there is a, a, a time travel element to the story, which I didn't. I don't think I saw it necessarily, or maybe that was part of the plan from the start. I don't remember. I honestly don't recall right now whether I intended for it to go that way all along, or if it just eventually hopped on that, that track. Um, but, uh, at some point after our anti-hero has, uh, you know, seduced, uh, a, a, a wide swath of, of womanhood and has, has gotten back at, uh, uh, you know, the, the slights, the perceived slights in his mind, uh, that he experienced 
as a youth. Um, then he he, uh, he 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 opts to go back in time, and he wills himself to go back in time. Part of himself wills successfully wills himself to go back and become six, sixteen year old uh, him again, all over again. I should say right here something that I forgot to mention earlier. And I think I've, I've talked about this before in a separate video, but it might be one, that, one of the ones that got nuked. I don't know. But um, I'm remembering now another big part of the inspiration for this book was I had a student. I had I occasionally had, you know, uh, when I when I was teaching, uh, you know, at a community college uh, and a job I had for several years, I, I would occasionally ask the students to write, uh, you know, about something that that they, a way in which they can relate to a theme of the story. So we read The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe, which is all about a man who gets revenge on his perceived enemy. And uh, I, I asked the class to uh, think about a time when you felt tempted to get revenge on someone. Um, and uh, did you give in to the, the temptation or did you decide not to? Uh, you know, what, what, uh, what happened with, with you in this. And just about everyone understood, you know, it was like a, <laughs> not everyone enjoyed, you know, the, these, these independent writing assignments. To, I, I know to some of them it was a drag. But when I, when I, when this became the assignment, there was always a lot of, oh boy, yep, I, I've got something for you. <laughs> there, um, and so, <laughs> and I said, you know, you can, you can lie about it if you if you don't want want me to report you to the, to the police or something like that. Half joking, mostly joking, but still, because um, I didn't know what kind of things they had done. Um, uh, but the most interesting, striking um, essay that I got was from this one guy who was uh, who who didn't strike me at all as being. Um, Anyone who you would think of uh, as a, as a lady killer type or or uh, as a player, you know, he was kind of short and squat, um, and uh, and I I, I taught the, this place that I taught was near a, a military base, and so a lot of students were soldiers or former soldier people who had who had served people who had gone to Iraq. I, I you know I, I heard a lot of stories from. Iraq War veterans or families of military. That was, in broadly speaking, that was the the clientele uh, of this community uh, school, community college that I was teaching, the satellite school where I was teaching. So this one guy wrote about uh, how uh, his wife was a, uh, who, who was his uh, uh, childhood sweetheart um, was unfaithful to him while he was in Iraq. Uh, and I guess maybe left him for somebody else. I don't know. I can't remember if that was the case or if it was just that she slept with somebody. But when he came back, he decided, uh, that he was going to, uh, seduce, uh, you know, uh, the, the wives or girlfriends of, of soldiers who were, who were, uh, off at war. And that he would do this, and that that he would then call after he had successfully uh, carried out a seduction. He would call or find some way to contact the husband and say, "Your wife is a whore. She just slept with me." And he got this kind of satisfaction out of out of doing this, out of wreaking this kind of havoc because of what what had been done to him. <clears throat> I read that and I was like, "Wow, <laughs> you know that was powerful." Um, so that, that really, that was a big part of the story as well. But anyway, time travel is involved. High school gets involved. Uh, eventually, uh, our anti-hero successfully, you know, because, because he's now, he's in the body of himself at age 16, 17, but, but he has the mind of, a, of, a you know, a whatever 40 something year old seducer. Uh, he, <clears throat> he successfully seduces this haughty, uh, you know, prom queen, head, 
head cheerleader um, who had always snootily turned up her nose at him uh, when when uh, when they were back at school, and uh, and this uh, has consequences. This this seduction, this successful seduction, has consequences that reverberate throughout time. I don't want to go into detail about what those are right now, <clears throat> but uh, but it ends up changing the course of history. Uh, you know, just like with the butterfly effect, um, that, that Ray Bradbury story where they go back in time and, and, and somebody kills a butterfly by accident and they go back to the present and, and everything's different. Or there's, there's a, a lot of things that, that are, that look the same, but really deep down, everything has changed. Um, and, uh, so due to the, due to what happens between the, the anti-hero of the story <clears throat> and uh, his successful seduction of the prom queen head cheerleader, uh, this uh, has re a reverberating effect uh, upon uh, upon uh, history. And uh, the the female character, of course, is is investigating her. I think the female character might be one of my. I don't know if the female character in the story might be one of the weaker characters that I've ever, uh, I mean, might be one of the more derivative characters, if I'm going to be brutally honest about myself and my work. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it's hard not to be, a, not to think of Silence of the Lambs or, or something, something like that, that, that had definitely had an influence, um, uh, there. Uh, but the, the, the twist was, of course, that she was like, a like a naughty girl, like, you know, that she, she, she wasn't just like Clarice, you know, who was, who was good, uh, and, and had the pro proper motivations for doing what she did, even if she had her demons, that this, this, this lady, um, you know, while she was successful and while she did her job well, she also had this dark side to her. And the story culminates in a, uh, a forbidden tryst between the two, uh, the two anti-heroes, let's just say, in a very unusual situation. Um, that is, he's still in the body of himself as a 16-year-old or 17-year-old, somewhere around there. And she's a grown woman. <clears throat> and uh, and then it goes on from there. Uh, so that was Heart Killer, uh, a.k.a. the Carnal Terrorist. Um, and uh, it, it's... Uh, it, it was something that I have to say heart killer was something that a book I was very proud of having written, but I don't think it ever quite got the acclaim that I wished it had. Um, not that any of my books are seeing that much acclaim or attention. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not under any illusion about being, <laughs> you know, some best selling author or anything like that. I know I'm, you know, it's just a, a certain I, I I write for a certain niche, um, but I really thought that uh, the the twists and turns that the story took, uh, the sci-fi element, the time the time twisting out, the, you know, the time changing element, um, all of those things, and and the uh, the effect of choosing this uh, pu uh, pua. That lifestyle, um, and uh, the consequences of that for everybody, not just for, not just for the seducer, not just for the serial seducer, but uh, for all of humanity. Uh, it really brings that into sharply into focus. At least that's what I think. That's my assessment of it. It was a very ambitious work, uh, more ambitious than anything I'd, I think I've done before or since, uh, just in all of the concept concepts, uh, that I was, you know, working with. Um, anyhow, it was initially published by the initial publisher who then went under. And then after that, I published it through Ann Sturzinger's, uh, outfit for a little while. And then it was picked up by Terrorhouse Books, which is where you can find it now. Heart Killer. <laughs>